Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here at the Farm Smart Expo, joined by Christine Brown from O'Mafra. Hi, Christine. How's it going? Good. How about you, Bernard? It's good. It's a hot day, but uh, we're okay with that. Hey, I always love to have you on Real Agriculture because you're always looking for ways to get more bang for your manure buck, and you've come up with something new here I want to talk about. Um, In-crop manure application in corn. Tell us what you're up to. So it's, it's a similar idea to what we've said before about injecting manure with a tanker into corn. Only this time we're trying it with, with drag hose. And the question always comes up, well, how long can I drag hose manure into corn before I start getting population decreases? And, and ideally, if we can plant the corn in a timely fashion and then apply that manure sometime before it starts damaging corn population, then that extends our, our window of time. And so what we were showing here today was application at different stages of that corn, starting from, from V1, so one leaf collar, all the way up to five leaf collar, which is what we've got here, and, and showing how much population damage do we get from that. Um, this is an idea that we, we, we uh, saw first from Glenn Arnold at, at Ohio State University, and he, he uh, designed a machine like the one that we're, that we're using today, just to go over the, the, the rows of corn and look at the, the differences in population and then take that right to yield and see, okay, what difference did that application make, just the drag hose application without the manure, to that stand of corn. And so from his discovery, and the same thing that we're seeing here today, is you can apply up to that V3, V4 stage, and it doesn't impact the population, it doesn't impact the yield. Once you get to V5, once that growth stage is above the, the surface, we start taking out a lot more plants. And, and that's what Glenn has found as well. Um, we're just basically showing the same thing here. Christine, what about the economics? Obviously, obviously manure is your uh, specialization. Um, are, are we, does this work better with dairy manure, you know, poultry manure, pork manure, swine applications? How does that factor out? So if we have to look at, at, at a bunch of different things. First of all, we're looking at, at nutrient utilization in the crop. So if we're applying it to a standing crop, those nutrients need to be very available to the crop. We don't want a long uh, period of mineralization where the bugs have to work on those nutrients to make them available. The crop's going to need them fairly soon. So we need a, a, a manure type where those nutrients are available immediately. So uh, pig manure is, is the one that comes to mind first. Um, there's differences in pig manure though. If you've got finisher hog manure that's more concentrated in nutrients, that's going to be better than or more economical than sow manure because sow manure is going to cost a lot more to apply the higher rates that you'll need. Dairy manure, uh, watery dairy manure works really well. If you've got something that's thicker, that's got a higher organic nitrogen content, um, mineralization is going to take longer. It's going to be a little bit less economical. But the economics isn't only from the nutrients that are applied. Uh, the other thing is, is in Glenn's work and in, other, in, in work that we've done in Ontario with manure compared to fertilizer, we get a yield boost. Glenn's yield boost from drag hosed manure into corn was about 15 bushels per acre. At $4 corn, that's $60 an acre, so that's a pretty good yield incentive yeah. too. But the one that's hard to put a dollar value on is the alleviation of compaction. So if we, if, if we can plant the corn into ideal conditions, apply the manure up to that, that V3, V4, so sometime between the time the corn's planted right up to that stage, into ideal conditions where we're reducing compaction, we're planting the corn on time, then that's also some economic advantage. Mm. I, I just don't know what kind of dollar value you put on that compaction. What about time? And you know, a, a lot of farmers will tell you, "Hey, it's a busy time of the year in the spring. I got to get the crop in. I got to, I got spring. You know, I'm a dairy farmer. I got to get some hay in. I haven't got time to go out and and do this." Um, you say, maybe you really got to think about uh, custom app. Yeah, there's more and more custom applicators in Ontario, and they're set up with with the equipment set up properly. Um, they, they can look at a field and they can say exactly how, how long it's going to take, what, what, what um, other things they might have to, to put in place. But if, if you've got corn to plant and spraying to do, and, and, hay, and, and hay is a perfect example of this. Farmers need to get their, their hay crop in 
that hay crop is it's it's the milk. It's it, good value hay crop is 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 dollars in milk. So maybe those are the opportunities to ask a custom applicator to come in, do the custom application in a timely manner. Um, all the the insurance is in place. The 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 regulations have all been followed, and and so it might be an economical way to do it. Awesome. Hey, uh, always fun to catch up with you, Christine. Thanks for uh, making the time. Not a problem.